There are no words to describe what my next guest has gone through. In fact, you can only say that it is a miracle that he is here with us today. A passionate young man serving God, he was only 23 years old when his whole life was changed one day while at work. Falling off a ladder, he sustained a massive head injury, leaving doctors to say that Nate would never walk, talk, or communicate the same ever again. The next few months would prove to be the hardest and most remarkable months of Nate's life. But Nate says his greatest misery became his greatest ministry. And now five years later, he has released a new book called More God, documenting his remarkable story. Let's welcome Nate in. Nate's gonna walk in for us, a walking miracle. Come on in, Nate. How are you? How are you, Maggie? Amazing. You, you must hear it all the time. You must get tired of hearing that you are a walking miracle. <laughs> He makes the miracles, you know, he makes them, so yeah. I'm just honored to share the story. You know, so. It's an amazing story. I, I um, spent my whole weekend reading this book and I was just totally gripped <laughs> and I couldn't believe that someone could go through so much and still be just singing God's praises. I mean, you've gone through a lot and we're going we're, we're gonna to spend two days with you um, today and tomorrow hearing your story because there's, again, there's so much to talk about. But um, before we get into the head injury and why you are a walking miracle, let's talk about life before the accident. So, you know, your parents said that you were just uh, in love with God from the beginning. From the time you were young, uh, they say many, you know, you weren't like every other teenager. You, you were always into things of God. Tell me about Nate before the accident. Oh, Nate before the, the accident. Um, I, I got to ministry when I was about 14. Mm. Um, I, I had that, that opportunity uh, from uh, the lead pastor and the associate uh, pastor of our church. Um, Ryan and Scott. Right, and they're in the book. Yep. Um, and they just kind of, you know, they saw uh, a kind of an, a, vision, a vision in me when I was a uh, young age. And uh, I, I, I couldn't understand why they wanted to be around me, you know, I was so young. And mm. uh, they said, hey, you know, we see a lot of potential in, in, in you. So uh, I started walking with them, you know, spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, and I spent a lot of time with them. Um, and every day they were just saying, you know, Nate, what is God doing in your life? Mm. Um, what is, you know, really checking me, you mm -hmm. know, keep me on my toes. So uh, I just, I felt like I was honored uh, to have mentors just want to be around me and spend time with me, you know. Challenging you. Big time. Yeah. Big time. And you also started speaking to even your uh, friends in church. Mm -hmm. You were leading uh, youth ministry at that time as well. Tell us about that. Um, I started, um, you know, started leading small groups uh, yeah. with my friends basically at the church. So I was like, I was 14, 15. Um, and uh, that was just, a, I felt like it was an honor, you know, for, for me to, to be able to, to serve my own friends, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I felt uh, that I was, I had, a, I had this time where uh, God gave me uh, a voice to speak truth into people's lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, I couldn't let that go. You know, it was such a great feeling knowing that God, God could use me at that at that age. Um, and I uh, started writing sermons when I got to the military and the Coast Guard yeah. and stuff like that too. So, um, and that just kind of blew up more and more and more. And so this passionate young man for Jesus also had a passion for surfing <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, <big time. laughs> Which we see on the cover of this book, <laughs> this, you know, amazing shot. You loved, you loved to surf or you still love to surf. Tell us about that passion, and, and there was a point where you you said to God, you know, I'm going to hang up my surfboard hmm. and uh, and really focus on you because you kind of felt like surfing was becoming an idol. Um, I I think that uh, anything can be your idol, mm -hmm. um, even even surfing, and, and for me, uh, it's always been a passion in my life. And you know, Jesus walked on water. You know, he was the first surfer, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, it's a great way of looking it, at it. it, it <laughs> you know, that's something to me. It, it is. It's a very spiritual thing. You yeah. know. Um, so um, at the same time, I thought maybe uh, it was. I had spent so much time in the water, even though I was serving people in the water. You know, getting great, great relationships. Um, I felt maybe uh, I spent a little bit, a little bit, a little bit too much time in the water. Mm. So I had this weird feeling um, before I fell that uh, maybe that was the one thing I hadn't uh, surrendered was surfing. Mm. You know, um, started a prayer journal, yep. and I said, you know, God, use me, whatever that takes, even if that means putting surfer surfing on 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 the uh, the uh, kind of on the back burner for yeah. for a year. You know. 
And you were also going through a hard time as well because you had been offered uh, a position or to, to move to Florida with Brian and Scott to start a whole new ministry as, as a youth pastor down there. And so you were really challenged with trying to figure that out, right? Mm -hmm. Big time, big time. Um, I mean, this was a great, great opportunity. Um, you know, Tallahassee, Tallahassee, Florida, mm -hmm. you know, between three uh, college campuses, you've got about 100,000 students there. Mm -hmm. um, Brian and Scott uh, gave me the opportunity to, to be the college uh, pastor, basically. Um, so if I wanted to go to Florida, it was, it was uh, definitely on the table, you know. Um, so, you know, I was searching and God was saying, God, I was saying, God, search my heart. Yeah. Um, and it all looked great on paper. They were saying, look, like, Brian and Scott, they said, you could just stay with me for free. I mean, it's all covered. You just, you just come down, you know, uh, yeah. to Florida. And, um, you know, everything has, everybody has a different calling in their life. Um, and uh, I don't know if that was the calling uh, in my life was go to Florida, mm -hmm. you know. Because something drastic happened. Right. You were supposed to move a couple days um, in. <laughs> and uh, and on, was it June 4th? 2007, you mm. had a severe accident. Tell us about that day. <laughs> June 4, 2007 for me is like D-Day, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's always kind of a weird thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it was just, I felt like a normal day at work, um, working with my dad uh, in a small town in Victoria, South Texas. Mm -hmm. He uh, supplies uh, parts for the oil field. Um, I was doing that uh, while I was serving the, the church and, and the students. So um, just me and my dad working that day uh, to make it a short story is basically I, I fell off a, a 10 foot ladder, hmm. um, shattered my wrist and uh, my skull uh, and I ended up uh, in a coma for, for six weeks. Wow. So. And at first when your dad saw you, he just saw that your arm was just hanging, right? right? And so he didn't know that you had this severe head injury until you got to the hospital, they took off your cap and saw that there had been severe damage. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, uh, Maggie. I just, I had a normal, like a baseball cap on, so uh, what had happened is uh, my dad took me in to, this, to, to the hospital to, to look at my wrist, you yeah. know, my left wrist, because it was basically folded backwards. Wow. Um, so he took me in for that, um, and uh, it was the, the, the pressure building up in my, in my skull that was shattered um, is what was so bad. Nobody, nobody knew I still had a brain injury at that point. Um, so they went to look at my wrist. Um, the trauma doctor had just walked by and said, you know, why is this guy talking the way he is? Basically, I was just talking really weird. Right. Um, they said gibberish, really. Yeah, they couldn't understand. exactly. They said, you know, we need to do it at emergency CAT scans. I, I think uh, maybe uh, he has a brain injury. So, uh, so you had pieces of your skull that had penetrated your brain. And this is a picture. Um, can I show it here? There's a, a picture. Oh, sorry. Right there of Nate's skull and there's a hole there and they say it was the size of a softball essentially right, right. because they couldn't put your the skull back together I mean it had all kind of crushed into your brain am I correct uh, correct a um, um, lot of lot of uh, people that have uh, traumatic brain injuries um, it's uh, you know one or two large pieces you know that are shattered or, mm. or something like that mine was shattered into a hundred little, little fragments, you know, so it was actually embedded into my, my brain, you know, yeah. so uh, the neurosurgeon had to take every little piece out of my, my, my brain, you know, and pray and hope for the best, you know. So you're in this coma, but God is just doing amazing things yeah. in the midst of it, and, uh, and your mom talks a lot in the book about, because, I mean, obviously, you don't remember a lot of what happened, but God just showed up time and time again with the doctors coming through that, you know, somehow were Christians or knew your parents and mm -hmm. connection after connection, money was coming in because your parents didn't know how they were going to pay for all of these medical expenses. Um, talk about that because, I mean, you know, you call this book More God and, and I find it interesting because your mom said, and I think I have the quote here, it said, she said to the doctor, if you and God cannot fix this to where Nate and Nate can talk and share God with people, he needs to go home. <laughs> he can go without walking. Nate can't be Nate if he can't tell people about God. <laughs> um, That's amazing. I mean, your mom knows you very well. My, uh, my parents have, have been, my, my parents are, you know, they're awesome, uh, mm -hmm. solid followers. And, um, you know, you, you, 
you never want to hear or see uh, your child uh, in that situation, you know what I mean, yeah. all so busted up. Um, but knowing that my, my parents, both my parents, knowing that um, the faith to know that, you know, if, if, if he can't speak truth in the people's hearts and lives again, uh, then God needs to take him home. Mm. Um, you know, it gets me still emotional, you know. Um, but, you know, they knew my prayer. My prayer was, uh, God, use me, whatever it takes to bring glory to, to Him, yeah. you know. So um, they didn't have any doubts, um, you know. Uh, a lot of my friends and stuff like that, uh, even though they were solid followers and believers, they, uh, you know, on paper, even the, ne the neurosurgeon had said, you know, I can't fix this, mm. this surgery, you know. Um, he had been doing small groups with my, my parents for years. Um, but he said, on, pa on paper, this, I can't fix this, hmm. you know. So, um, the power of prayer, you yeah. know. And in the midst of that, your surfing buddies, they had an online message board that was kind of yeah. just totally yeah. blew out of, out of the water yeah. with PFN. <laughs> Pray for Nate. Everybody was praying for Nate. These, these surfers were holding you up in prayer every mm. single day. And there's, a, there's a, a shot in the book of this huge binder yeah. just filled with the thread of just people praying for you time and time again. Yeah. Were you just amazed by that when you woke up? Oh, it was a beautiful thing to see. You know, when I woke up from the coma, I, I, I had to relearn to, to, to read and write mm. uh, pretty much. And, uh, you know, reading is one of my, was still kind of difficult for me. You know, when I read stuff, it's hard for me to remember it. Um, so my mom started reading uh, the, the, we call yeah. it the PFN binder now. Yeah. That's a, we printed it out, it's a five inch binder front and back of all these guys that, uh, you know, pray for Nate from June 4th. So, um, you know, the scene before uh, June 4th was kind of, you know, rough around the edges kind of people, you know, you just don't talk about faith or, or right. God, you know, right. it, was a, it was a public public forum, basically. We just talk about surfing. Yeah, only. That's it. Right, yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be. Right. Well, for some reason, everybody just jumped onto this thing and started, you know, pray, we need to pray for Nate. And mm. um, it opened a lot, of, a lot of eyes and a lot of hearts. I mean, um, some of my buddies uh, that, that would, would, you know, wouldn't re really re recognize God or, or faith, um, their eyes were, were just, wide at wide open you know like this is this is because must god must be real you know mm. what i mean so um that made it all worth it to me you know to wake up and see that uh, you know it's an awakening to them you yeah know, so there is so much more to your story and i'm so glad you're going to come back and be with us tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, again, the book is called More God, Seeing Blessings Through the Pain. And if you want to get a copy of this book, you can visit our e-store and just go to crossroads.ca or you can uh, call 1-800-265-3100. Again, there's so much more to this story. We've only touched the surface. There is a, a story of your angel and <laughs> all of this stuff that we have to get into. I'm so excited you're here, Nate, and you'll be here tomorrow.